a small group leader at Sam Houston State University, her faith began to blossom. And upon completing her undergraduate, she interned at the same campus, met the man of her dream, Sir James. They would marry and begin the journey of doing ministry together, which in 2020 took them to Pioneer Chi Alpha and two places where it's not, Texas A&M Prairie View and on a historically black college and university. Amen. Because of this bold effort, she is helping build a new Chi Alpha that is both mystical and methodical, one that acts justly and loves mercy, one that proclaims the firstborn of the dead, one that loves God, loves neighbors, loves enemies. In short, with the help of Mariah, we are changing the world from Texas A&M Prayer Review. So please join me in welcoming the stage, Mrs. Mariah Ofer. Wonderful 
we started in 2020, as mentioned before, and it has been great. And it's just like we are learning so much about ourselves in this process. And I truly believe that God placed us together for such a time as this. Um, together, we are reclaiming territory by reconciling students back to Christ, helping students fall in love with the beautiful, fierce, and risky. Our students, uh, HBCUs were founded because black people could not go to white facilities and universities. So when, in our school, there's a lot of hurt, mistrust, and the number one question I would say that students have is, is a Christianity a white man's religion? And I'm sure you're feeling it in your campuses as well. You know, people start to hear Christianity and they're like, mm, you know, I don't want no part of that. However, we have the power of the Holy Ghost, amen. And we just have, we would say that we have about 45 committed students in our ministry today. And they are awesome. Like they are, I would say crazy. They look crazy. They look thrown off if you use that terminology. And so our services are loud. We end up rapping at some point and just dancing and all some stuff. They're pretty fiery. Went out to take the band to go free preach. <laughs> so we're doing some reconciliation all over the place. All over the place. So I'm going to just take a quick moment to pray. Is that all right? All right. Heavenly Father, we welcome you here in this place. We acknowledge your presence, O oh God. We bless your holy name. Holy Spirit, whatever it is that you want to speak, let us have ears to listen. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say amen. 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 Okay, so Ideal Team Player. It's this book that's written by a name by Patrick Lencioni. Macaroni? Okay. It's a business book, but he is a Christian. I'm going to go ahead and show it to y'all real quick. Y'all need to go ahead and get this thing, all right? Go ahead and get this book. It's a very quick read. Uh, if, if you love stories, it's basically a story. If you do read slow, you really can't get in about two days. Like, it's, it's a great book. And it's a fictional story about a man that takes over a CEO uh, of a construction business, um, which is cool and all, but he has these big, huge projects, and he needs to hire more people. But he needs to hire the right people. And so he goes on to find those right people, a.k.a. the ideal team player. Now, coupled with this book is another book called Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Anybody read that one? I'm like, this is some good stuff. I'm going to just go ahead and hang that right there. Y'all go ahead and get some of that. Go ahead and get some of that. And so being on a team is really, really important. And it's really very much God's idea. And I believe all of us, actually I know all of us, have some experience of being on a team. So if you played basketball before, go ahead and raise your hand. That's a lot of y'all. I wish y'all could see this. It's just about everybody in this room. Okay. Anybody play instruments in a band? Okay. Y'all are all temple. Okay. Y'all already get this. Worship team. I want to see my people. Just about all y'all again. Okay. Anybody work in a uh, fast food? I like that. Hey, that's teamwork. <laughs> that's teamwork right there. And I don't want to um, forget my chess people. Anybody that doesn't really like a chess? Okay. Yeah, no, really good people. Okay, and so we're all entering a new season of team. Everybody say team. So whether you're in your first year of ministry or your 65th, you are entering into another season where you're going to be humble, hungry, and smart. All right. So you may be asking, all right, how do you? Grow to become an ideal team player. I was born just naturally humble, is what I would tell you. Just naturally. Throughout this whole thing, I want you to be asking, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to grow to become an ideal team player? I'm repeating that because I need you to understand that, asking the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to start with this. Number one, team is God's idea. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says this, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. 
If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. We are stronger together. And we see Jesus, he's, he does this with the disciples when he sends them out two by two. We see the apostles going out and spreading the gospel around the world. We see this in the priesthood. We see this in the functions of the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. T, T, T. I'm going to go ahead to 1 Corinthians 12, 17 through 20. You'll likely have to go back and get the rest of the scriptures and write down. But if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Our different skills and functions are not complete without each other. And we love this scripture, Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We need each other. We need each other to teach. So why is becoming an ideal team player important? It is important because ideal team player qualities help us to look more like Jesus. Um, I say ideal, but I don't want us to, to confuse ideal with skill. So sometimes we think ideal team player, and your mind may go automatically to most valuable player. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the virtue. And these virtues are shown and seen in our ultimate team player, Jesus. Like our leader, but he's also a team player. We get to see that. And so I, I, being on this new pioneer team, anybody have vision for being on the pioneer team? Woo! Right. There was definitely some refining work that I did not expect to even happen. I was like, okay, we're going out. <laughs> we about to do this thing. I got all the answers, all right? But what I found out is that your girl is selfish. Your girl has some jealousy in her heart. Your girl thought she just had like it all and everybody else was wrong. And I just was desperate, not for people to see me as being right, but I was desperate to look more and more like Jesus. I said, Jesus, you've got to get this out of me. God, you have to change me because the mission is too big for me to be walking around like it's about me. I said, God, you have to change me. And so that iron is sharp and iron. And it feels so good, but it was good for me and it was good for my heart. So you're walking into a season, be ready, where iron sharpens iron. And don't be afraid to lean into team. Don't be afraid to allow God to refine you. Which also means we got to tap into those insecurities. Not just know what they are, but say, Jesus, would you heal me? Would you walk into the, this? Would you walk me step by step into forgiveness? to thinking I'm high and mighty, and to thinking that I'm the most brilliant person walking on this earth. God, would you heal me from anxiety? Would you heal me from wanting to be seen as great? I'm both hungry and smart. We want to look more and more like Jesus. Everybody say humble. Humble. Come on, we can do that. Humble. Humble. humble.
seek attention of your own. Emphasizing team over self. Lack concern of status and quick to point out the contributions of others. I hope you can think about somebody within your group that, that shares those beautiful qualities. Liziani shares the definition that we share with C.S. Lewis. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less. Sometimes humility, there's this like false sense of humility where you have these talents that the Lord has given you, but then you say, oh, I need to be humble. Like, I can actually build this pizza. I don't want nobody to know that I know how to build. But actually, you're keeping us as a team from building the kingdom of God. And this is where I would say there's another definition is a sober sense of reality. Which, okay, I can sing. Yes, I can hit a couple of notes here and there. You know, I you know I can do the Mariah Carey hit notes, but I can hit a couple of notes here and there. I don't have to downgrade that when someone asks me, "Can I sing?" I just say yes. This is true, and it's because Jesus has gifted me of this gift. It's all for the glory of God. Humility always points back to the glory of God. We give it all to Jesus. Philippians 2 and 3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, valuing others above yourselves. We need desperately to be humble people. I'm going to move on to hungry. I'm not talking about food, but hungry. This person is self motivated, they're diligent, wanting to learn. They want more responsibility. This, this is what I look for in a person that's getting ready to um, maybe lead a small group, core group, discipleship group, whatever you call it. Do they take initiative? Have they taken some type of initiative to lead someone else to Christ? We know the goal, go therefore and make disciples. Yes. Okay, what are some different ways that you've been thinking about of how to reach out to others? Are you looking for ways to serve? Do you have a genuine excitement to do the work of God? Is my girl, uh, Kim, girl, I don't know how to say your last name, Moresco? Kim Moresco? Hey, didn't think I was going to be saying your name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this girl knew that her campus needed some some more community. So did nobody tell her? Did nobody tell her? Okay, I'm gonna start inviting people to do movie nights. I got all this other stuff to do, but we're gonna have some movie nights and we're going to fellowship together. I know you can think of some more people that have done things like that. That's called hunger. I wanna I wanna kind of clarify a little bit. Hunger is not overworking yourself. There's there's a healthy Part of knowing, you know, this is Jesus doing the work through me, not me being God. Okay? Being too in love with good things and not Jesus himself. And my heart check is Matthew 7, 22, where it says, Lord, Lord, we did all these things in your name. I prophesied. I baptized the folks in the fountain. I went to all the mission trips. I spoke to all these events. And then God would look back and say, Y'all thank you, but who is you? He wouldn't say who is you, but who are you? <laughs> <laughs> we must be hungry for the things of God being obedient to what he's called us to do. And the last one is smart. And, and okay, this may confuse you, but smart does not mean intellectually smart, like all my chess players in here, but more about common sense or social smart. So if you're smart, you're interpersonally appropriate, you're aware of group dynamics, a good listener, and ask good questions, and emotionally intelligent. Again, it's not all my chess people smart. So think more along the lines of wisdom, discernment. 
They know what's going on in the room and how to deal with it. Smart people will know how to operate in conflict. Everybody say conflict. Conflict. Some of us don't like conflict. But smart people know how to operate in conflict. They see it, know how to prevent it, but they also know how to handle it. Okay? Hmm. They're also aware of the consequences of latent influence. So they can see if someone is sad, they can tell, oh, my face is defeating what is in my heart. Let me smile real quick. <laughs> and the smart person is always listening to the Holy Spirit saying, Lord, what do you want me to say to this person that is grieving? What do you want me to say to this student who is bawling on the ground right now? Like, what do you want me to do? So really quickly, I shared um, a few of those attributes. And I want to go through the Venn diagram that Lencioni has um, given. I was, I'm just going to sweep through it real quick. It ain't even on the board. Just, just catch what you can catch, all right? So the pawn would be a person that is only humble. They're just humble. They're not hungry or smart. They can be pleasant, unassuming, but this person, you may notice, they're like always left outside of the conversation. And unfortunately, they have little impact. The bulldozer is only hungry, okay? They're humble, they're hungry, but they're not humble or smart. They're determined to get things done, but they'll probably kill a thousand people on the way to get it done just to achieve their goal. And then there's the charmer, which would, they will be only smart, but they lack humility and hunger. So they can be pretty entertaining, a lot of people like them for a while, but then they have no to little interest in long-term well-being for the team. And so then we'll move into the next part where it's like, um, you may have two of these attributes, not just one and not all three. And so then there's the accidental mess maker. This will begin to start making sense in here. They're humble and hungry, but they ain't so smart. <laughs> so their hearts are usually in the right place, but they may have a hard time reading the room um, or knowing when to say the right thing. So, you know, maybe like there's a group of guys that are like, yeah, let's give free um, hugs and paint the toenails out on campus and you're kind of like, mm, maybe we shouldn't do that actually. Like, I see your heart, I see your heart. And then we have the lovable slacker. They're humble and smart, but they are not hungry. <laughs> not looking to be on the pedestal, no. no. Um, they usually have a positive attitude, but unfortunately, they will only do what they tend to be asked to do. There's a person sitting in the room and someone's like, hey, can we get somebody to pray? Or can we get somebody to pass the offering? And then they're like, I'm good. I'm good right here. So that's the lovable slacker. You love them. You love them. But they're not doing much. And then we have the skillful politician, whom is kind of dangerous in the city. Uh, uh, they're hungry and smart, but they are not humble. They work real hard. They can, they're probably the most skilled person. They know how to fill up all the sound. They know how to do it all. But they, you know, they can get it done, but they lack humility. And uh, mm -hmm, it's for their personal benefit because they want to be the director and they're going to take the scouts' job. You know, like that, that's, that's their, that's what they got going on. But the ideal team player has adequate measures of of hunger, hungerness, I just made that up, hungerness and people smart. And we all, if we, if, if we be, if we're honest, we all have growth areas. Um, but let's do a heart check and ask your friends, and be honest with me, you have to explain all this to them too. But am I hungry, humble, and smart? Like, do I need to grow in these areas? And I gave you these labels. I gave you these labels, but don't go around labeling people talking about you a whole other stuff. I know exactly what you are. <laughs> so again, 
to refine each other. He's given us each other to fulfill his great commission. I hope you have um, the great commission memorized. Go ahead and note that down if you don't. No shame. So memorize it. And it is hide the word in your heart. Jesus is worthy of our best. That's why we become ideal team players. He is worthy. I want to paint this illustration, but not with words. So, I would like to, I'm looking right at y'all. Y'all have to like this together. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Y'all, so could y'all come up here, please? Thank you. Uh-huh. So, so y'all, we'll bring in. Thank you. Uh-huh. Y'all, you, 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 Praise the Lord. So you ready? You ready? Y'all go ahead and stand right here. And I mean, um, I actually need four ladies that are about the same height. Could y'all just come up here? Y'all, y'all come up here. Y'all come up here. Okay, okay. This is too many people. Okay. Uh, just y'all too. I thank you. Thank you for being willing. Praise the Lord. Y'all come up here. Okay, 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 y'all look at Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Y'all go over stand a little further away from me and where that is. Y'all a little bit in the light so the people see them. Okay, so we're gonna uh, uh, do a mission. Okay, so, real simple, real simple. I want two people. I'm, what you're gonna have to do, let me, let me, let me. You're gonna sit down on the ground. You're going to sit down on the ground, and then you're going to lock each other's arms, and then you're just going to stand up, you know what I'm saying? You're just going to stand up. And then you're going to put your hand on each other's back, and you're just going to walk, you 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 walk, like right here or something. And then you're just going to build a pyramid. Got it? Build, build a pyramid. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So we'll do two. So put your backs together. Put your backs together on the ground. Back together on the ground. They married so they can do this. Okay, they can lock arms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just look at Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. This gonna be y'all right here. But I want y'all to read this first. It's gonna be you. It's gonna be you. It's gonna be you. It's gonna be you. Alright. Everybody ready? Yeah. This is gonna be great. Alright. Actually, I'm gonna let y'all do this first, and I'm gonna hype y'all up. Y'all gonna be my hype man too? Yeah. Alright. Y'all remember what to do? You're gonna get up. You're gonna put your hands on each other. Start. Start right here. Do to do to do. Come on, Bill. Be in, all right? Let's hype them up. All right, let's hype them up, hype them up, hype them up. Okay, we got one person. Oh, she's ready. Ready. 
And in team meetings, it's kind of crazy. Our meetings are very fun. And so my husband has wonderful ideas that sound uh, crazy to me. And so I'm just like, ah, 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 ah. but then Joel's like, guys, let's figure out how we can get this done. So everyone, follow Joel. Okay, and then there's Sydney. Sydney is the one that doesn't play the blame game. I learned so much from Sydney. She's so wonderful. Um, she's there worshiping the Lord. It's humble too. <laughs> and um, I, there was this moment, y'all. We were new for a new team, and we were making a schedule, and we spent like 15 hours making the schedule, and I was impatient. The Lord was waiting on me. And then at the end of the schedule, at the end of the day, we was like, no schedule. And I'm like, search me, Mr. Really? <laughs> no schedule. And so we all kind of sit there looking at each other all awkwardly. And then I'm looking at Sir James, kind of giggling, kind of mad. And I'm like, oh, no, we just wasted all this time. It's your fault. And then, this is, don't do these things, please. Please don't do that. Um, not I just sit there. And so then Sydney was like, wait, it's all our faults. <laughs> it's all of our faults. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, and then I, I, I would say there's missional spaces where we are on mission together. And this may be in a large group, the Chi Alpha House, um, the campus time. Like, we're, we're not necessarily in a meeting. I may be with students over here, you're with students over there. But we're, like, on mission together. And so together we will set the atmosphere and you're like looking to make things better. That is an ideal team player. And so um, I want to highlight Sir James, who is the most strategic, passionate, greedy, go getter, dreaming warrior ever there is in the world. And let me tell you, he's the only person on the team that can't sing, but he'll put himself out there if he feel like. Like we need to be lifting our voices unto the Lord. Y'all should see it someday. Call him if you want him to do some calling. Okay. And so that is being an ideal team player. And then I will say myself, uh, I call myself um, the one that named herself the grease of the team. And you know how like when you hear that creaky door, it's like, hey, 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 hey. it's like, why won't anybody fix that? Like, can you put some grease on that? So being an ideal team player is seeing where people need to put the grease on something. So if there's somebody in the room that's sitting by themselves, go talk to them. If you need a refresh, refresher or some, some water and stuff, go find me. Love something. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and then the last area I would say is, I, would, I call it discretional time. And this may be... You're being a team even when you're at home. You're being a teammate when you're praying. That's extremely important. Maybe buying gifts for someone. Or maybe if somebody's grumbling about your teammate, most likely a student that's going on in here yet, grumbling about your teammate, you don't just sit there and listen, but you honor your teammate, even if they're saying something that you have for your grievance. Our friend Asia is great in the discretional area. She's what I would call the one that everyone loves to be around. She's checking in on everyone. Uh, she doesn't just disciple her people. Like, it's like, okay, this is my small group. We're going to be the bomb. We reach in the world. Like, Asia's having one on ones with your people because she wants them to love the world with all their heart. I wish I could tell you story upon story about my team. And I'll be around. You can ask Sir James, you know, all these questions. Um, but we are indeed not perfect. We do, somebody needs to hear this, we have strong disagreements. But at the end of the day, we are committed to love each other.
I love, and I hope you can sense, and I'm sure it's already been mentioned, that there is a great spiritual awakening coming. It's on its way. Like, it's here. It isn't going to happen with a whole bunch of Lone Rangers. But in T, with the body of Christ. And we have to love each other. We have to. I want to remind us again of Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either one of them falls down, one can help the other up. So pity the one who falls and has no one to help him. We have an enemy to the feast and many battles along the way. We are called to be together. We are called to fulfill the Great Commission. And I trust that this is being planted deeply, deeply, deeply in the heart. I really want to highlight just real quick again, we must, must, must love each other and figure out what that means as we are humble, hungry, and smart. An ideal team player is ultimately an act of love. Love for our Father that leads us to obedience and into our maturation and to love those around us. John 13.35 says this. Memorize this one too, please. And the world will know that they are that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. Amen. This is the question that I want you to process. There's a lot of processing going on. God's doing a lot of stuff in my heart. What area of growth is the Holy Spirit highlighting for you to focus on? Let us be ideal players in the kingdom of God. Let us be hungry. Let us be humble. And let us be smart. Hey, friend. Can you come pray? Would you show us how to come to you and give us this grace that you're going to try to give us to fulfill the love that you do have for us? That's not about us. for us to grow and help us to grow and also to soften our hearts to understand what you want us to do. That you rely on having her come and speak to us and then work in the name of Second Sunday. I just be blessed to her current and ministry as well. And you just Multiply it tenfold for what it is now. All right, thank you. Are you all right? Yeah. Okay. Here's what we're going to do we're going to go into one more session, 30 minute long. My story, every my story you're going to hear is going to be only 30 minutes. 
Uh, there we go. And then we're going to break because you're going to have free time before dinner. And then after dinner, you're going to party. Who wants to have more education after you eat a food? You know? uh, so that's kind of the point that we're trying to do. Eat a food instead of learning. Yeah. Eat a food. Uh, yeah.